Tonight on Cellocast, does your troll have rabies? A new report from the University of Norway says, yeah. Also tonight on Cellocast, light bulbs. Why can't we eat them? That stupid doctor doesn't know what he's talking about. And neither do you, Mom. A personal editorial by me. Welcome to Shallowcast, episode three. Hey guys, welcome back to Shallowcast. I am Nathan Soros. And I am, as always, Xander Grimm. You, were, you weren't Xander Grimm that one time. I mean, you haven't always been Xander Grimm. No, no, there was that one time where I had some weird Norwegian guy's last name. That was really that was awkward. awkward, yeah. I didn't, I, you know, I didn't want to say anything about it. I, I felt like I didn't want to make you uncomfortable by bringing it up again. So actually, I'm sorry for mentioning it now. You had one job. Well, you know what? Okay, hang on. I, look, we don't have to... Look, let's uh, let's do something fun. Um, I, we've got fan mail, actually. What? Fan mail already? Yeah, what? I didn't I... even think we had fans, but um, apparently we had <laughs> mail. Um, so what uh, I, I actually posted... I tweeted a while ago, Hey, guys, send us some fan mail. Ask us your questions, blah, blah, blah. Something along those lines. I don't pay attention to things I say. Um, yeah, and, we want them to get to know yeah, us. Yeah, a bunch of people sent in some questions. I've got a ton of them that went to my twitter actually which i'm really excited about because i didn't realize so many people followed me oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool mm-hmm. man you're you're growing in popularity I, apparently so it, you know it's nice to it's nice to feel loved and like accepted and stuff so, you know I, I get a little insecure sometimes but it's good to know people yeah. like the things i'm doing actually yeah all right well yeah let's start let's start reading some all right and, and see where it goes well, let me see here um pirate 87 says why did you let nathan sing in the last episode that was horrible oh uh, hmm. All right. Well, that's uh, uh, that. You know what? That's uh, cool. That's fine. Uh, keep going. Not not an audacious start. No, but... that's uh, that's that's fine though. That's cool. I can I can roll with that. Um, but Doctor Forty Five says Nathan is ruining your podcast. Why would you let that noise destroy my head? Oh. Um. Okay. Does he know? He's a butt doctor. Well, I mean, he you know he's a doctor. He has a PhD. I mean, I guess that. God, I guess that makes him an expert. Um. Okay. Uh. Science Factory says Nathan is a noisy fool. And okay, you know what? No, no, you guys. This I'm not gonna. No, I'm not gonna take this. Listen, when my mother left this podcast to me, she did so with only one condition, and that condition was for me to follow my heart, no matter what. And if that means that I'm gonna sing and get excited about stuff and be a fucking virtuoso, then. That is what I'm going to do during this podcast, and none of you and your naysaying and your negativity are going to talk me out of it, okay? Nathan. <laughs> what? Nathan. What? Yo, look, what? Look, 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 look. Here's one. Here's one from Captain Midnight, okay? okay. He, Captain Midnight's a cool guy. He, he, he sent us a very nice what question. Captain Midnight wants to uh. know which Spider-Man movie is our favorite and why. Oh, that's, that's a good question, actually. It is a good question. I like good... I like Spider Man a lot. I feel, yeah, I do too. Okay, Peter Parker, gonna... Miles Morales, Ben Riley. I'm gonna. Okay, I'm breathing a little bit. Um, jeez. Okay. Wow. Um, Spider Spider Man. Uh, which one's your favorite? Uh, Spider Man Two is actually actually my favorite. Um, I know a lot of people have been saying that Amazing Spider Man's better than Sam Raimi's entire run, mm-hmm. and while I do like it more than both one and three, Spider Man Two is still my favorite. Okay. Um, and actually, I remember when uh, when the trailer first came out, I I had no idea who the villain was supposed to be. Like when they showed the you didn't know who Doctor Octopus stopping... was. I knew who Dr. Octopus was, but the first shot we see of him is his claws stomping on the ground, and I'm just like, oh, what the hell see, is that's, this? See, that's like how I knew it was instantly him. But that's because my oh. little brother really likes Dr. Octopus. He likes any fictional character that has glasses, and in the animated series, Otto always wore those big goggles, and so oh, yeah. I was like, oh, it's Dr. Octopus, because it, I recognize the claws. But yeah, right. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I guess. I guess I just wasn't thinking. I think I honestly thought it was supposed to be the lizard. What's happening here? Oh, well, that was a rumor which I'd wish had come true. But yeah. so that's your favorite is Spider Man Two. Yeah, Spider Man Two is my favorite. Yeah, okay. definitely. Well, yeah. I am. Hmm. All right. I am going to disagree with you there and say okay. that Spider Man Two is my favorite. 
Is that, that is that how that works? That, is that disagreeing? No, that is no no no. Oh, that's agreeing. Oh, with me. that's agreeing. No, 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 no. Okay, no, I yeah. okay then I agree is the word. Um, it's definitely the most well put together of the films because you're not burdened by um, you know, the first movies being forced to go through the origin story again. Right, but, right. And you also don't have what I think the problem with the third film was, where you feel like you have to up the ante no matter what, and so they throw in a ton of extra things. That's why yeah. that's why second movies in trilogy I think are usually the strongest. Right, definitely, yeah, just because it's one of those things where they just they knew what they wanted to do mm-hmm. with it and they're they're building up from the from the first one yeah. and leading into a third one but not trying to uh they're just not trying to I guess I don't know overdo themselves yeah. or expose themselves. They're they're trying I mean it's obviously more it's obviously a grander spectacle than the first one, uh-huh. but it's not overbearing. Yeah, it's it's a very nicely paced movie. There's there's some goofy moments like the just the whole the whole thing between him and the arms gaining sentience is is a little oh. weirdly handled. But I mean, I, I mean, considering what's happened in the comics, not only over through the years, but also recently, mm-hmm. um, you know, Doctor Octopus has been through weirder things, but. I it, you know it's just kind of an odd. I think it's just one of those things where stuff like that doesn't always translate to film that well. That makes sense. Um, but I you know I would agree with that. It's like because they don't go into it thinking how are we going to top ourselves in a second film. I mean at least I wouldn't. I would be thinking well now that I've got the origin story out of the way I can do whatever I want. And that would have been that would have been my uh, my excitement in doing a second film. Yeah, definitely. So but yeah, yeah. I, um, I always, yeah I know. You just said that the lizard was a rumor for the movies. I am really kind of bummed that they that they never really used him. Um, as far as Amazing Spider-Man goes, I know this is probably the same for everybody. I wasn't a huge fan of the overall design of him, mm-hmm. but I thought the character was was nicely handled. Um, it kind of felt a little reminiscent of Norman Osborn from the first one. Huh. From just just because you know the the scientist trying to prove a formula and testing it on himself and then again going nutters and becoming resource- or remorseful at the end yeah. excuse me um but it definitely i mean it was definitely a different story and i am excited for i am excited for amazing spider-man 2 and one thing that i'm kind of interested in in amazing spider-man uh the the universe itself is i definitely think that if they tackled the if they tackle the symbiote angle again, mm-hmm. I definitely think it's going to be a lot more handled because for for some reason, something about Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker, I think really would be able to play up the aggression angle okay. just because of the way he acts. Like, I think, because, I mean, heck, with with this Spider-Man, that's what happens. Like, his initial uh, outings as Spider-Man is just flat-out revenge. Uh-huh. It's not a, like, with the... Uh, like with the first Sam Raimi movie, it's not like, oh, well, he just happened to be chasing this guy and it turned out to be the guy that killed his uncle. No, he's actively searching for him. Uh-huh. So I think that if they brought in the symbiotes, it would be, uh, it would re- you know, it would be a very easy angle to reignite that aggression in some shape or form. And I really think Andrew could pull it off. Okay. Well, that's cool. Um, I actually have not seen it. I haven't seen The Amazing Spider-Man, so I need to watch that before I see a second one. Okay, yeah, definitely. Yeah. But uh, the second one, um, you know, of course there's some fan speculation, but it's uh, introducing Electro. I think I heard mentioning of um, Norman Osborn. Mm-hmm. I think I actually saw a casting picture. I just can't remember who it is. I've seen a casting um, pictures for Electro, uh, Rhino, and uh, Norman Osborn. And Tumblr has gotten excited about the fact that Gwen uh, was being shown wearing the outfit that uh, she was yeah, wearing when she and- died in the original comic book. Whoa! Spoiler alert. Um, but yeah, it's I thought... like comics, like it's decades old. So no. yeah, I know. I, I I would say that that uniform, that thing is spot on. I was I was incredibly impressed. But I mean, I guess it's not that hard to replicate. But still, there's just you know what I mean. Like when you see something that's just so spot on, you just you gotta like it. Uh, I th- I did like it. I did like that costume a lot actually. Um, based on the the clips I've seen, the little bits and pieces of it. I you know I I, I want to actually watch the movie see how I feel about it being in action, um, but you know I, I think it's probably gonna be pretty good. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Okay, well, I think I think we got you out of your funk. So let's go better. on to a 
Let's go on to a couple of other questions okay. if you want to handle this next one. Yeah, let me actually um, – okay. I have a question by M. Turner underscore genius. Uh, would, who, I know that guy. I know that guy too. I know him from Twitter and also Tumblr now. Um, yeah. And he asks, you've talked about kaiju films on every episode so far and not mentioned the classic Destroy All Monsters. That is not actually a question. Um, but he's no. right. We haven't mentioned Destroy All Monsters, which is my favorite Godzilla movie. And I've never seen it. I, that makes me sad. I want you to watch I, it. It's 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 certainly legendary, and I know of it. Oh, and, you know, so I, good. I, I know the story. Mm -hmm. It's just I just I think just because of lack of availability overall, I just haven't seen it. I actually um, I want to say I discovered the existence of it when I first when we first got the internet in our house because I was online and I was looking at Godzilla movies and I found out there was one that had every Godzilla monster in it and I got really mm -hmm. excited about that. And I actually went. Um, I went on eBay as a as a young lad, and I was able to buy uh, somebody's VHS copy with Japanese audio and subtitles. And I watched oh, it wow. over and over and over again. Um, and it's like one of my one of my prized possessions. Still, it's like one of my finest uh, nerdy acquisitions. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's like when I was at the store the other day and I bought Final Wars on UMD for a freaking dollar. <laughs> I love the fact that it's on UMD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because nobody owns a PSP anymore, I don't think. No, and I will never be able to watch it. On, on, I will never be able to watch that copy, but screw it, it was a dollar. Incidentally, all pod, all shallow cast episodes are available on UMD at your local UMD dealers. But that's another subject entirely. That is, yeah. Yeah. Um oh, okay, he has a second he has a follow up. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I know you're both I'm not gonna read that. I know you're both excited <laughs> about Pacific Rim. But what are your thoughts on Del Toro's now probably permanently shelved at the Mountains of Madness? What are your thoughts, Sander? I had to look it up. Oh. Those are my thoughts. Okay. Um, I had I had no idea what the uh, I had no idea what the what it was. You're not, you're not much of a up. Cthulhu guy. I I know of it. Okay. I guess I should be more of one. <sighs> but I, for whatever reason, I've just never really delved into it outside of you know the, the South Park episodes and things like that. Oh. Um, well, the the trick with I'm sorry, I don't I feel like I don't want to interrupt you. Well, there was a thing that came out. Um, IDW, the comic company, does a, an event. They did it a couple years ago, uh, two years in a row, and then I think this year they changed it up a bit. But it was called Infestation. Okay. And it was basically a, while not really a direct crossover, it basically kind of has. Uh, it involves an, a government agency opening alternate dimensional portals and spreading infections. In the first series, it was zombies, and then it was uh, Lovecraftian monsters. Okay. And and so I read a couple of the series. You know, both both runs featured Transformers, so I checked those out. And then there was actually one um, in the first series. It was uh, da, 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 it was Weekly World News. It was okay. Bat Boy and some other sort of alien whose name I cannot remember, but it was pretty darn funny. As a matter of fact, um, why, don't, why don't you talk about it while I try and find that comic? Okay, well, um, I actually think you would like Cthulhu, uh, at least the Cthulhu mythos, because um, even though the internet's done it to death to the point where it's just redundant and annoying like Bacon and Nikola Tesla, there is some really cool stuff in Cthulhu's uh, mythology. I like those things. I, yeah, but they're really overplayed is my point. Um, I know. Uh, the, um, what H.P. Lovecraft did was he wrote about um, Cthulhu and other creatures like Cthulhu. There's there's a lot of other gods in the Cthulhu universe than just Cthulhu himself. Yeah, and, isn't there an episode of Billy and Mandy where he gets possessed and he tries to summon Yog sahoth I, I wouldn't know. I've never, I don't think I've watched that in like 10 years. Oh my, yeah. okay. Um, no, but um, but yeah, yogg Sothoth is definitely, he's a figure in Cthulhu Mythos. Um, Shub Nigarath, the goat with the, the black goat with a thousand young. Um, there's, uh, oh my gosh, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of creatures and a lot of monsters in the Cthulhu Mythos that um, don't get any coverage or any play outside of Lovecraft's books and things that uh, his friends and his contemporaries wrote about. Because he wrote this really sprawling mythology about these extra-dimensional creatures and monsters from other planets and things that lived on our world before humans existed. And then a lot of other writers wrote about things in that same universe, um, including Stephen King. He was inspired pretty heavily by Cthulhu and stuff when he wrote The Mist, if I remember right. And, oh, I can see that, yeah. Yeah, and I'm actually reading, uh, I'm rereading Needful Things right now, and there's a reference to Yogg-Sothoth in uh, Needful Things. 
And oh, okay, cool. Inter- and also, actually, I actually mm-hmm. I'm glad I get to tie this in now. The theme song for our podcast, the the old one, not the new one we just used in this episode, uh, is from the Darkest of the Hillside Thickets, which are a rock group whose entire song catalog is based on the Cthulhu Mythos. That's where. Oh, really? Yeah. And so the song I used in the theme song for a while was from a uh, theme to Spaceship Zero, which is like their big concept album. It's a, a rock opera about uh, space travelers getting lost on an alien planet. But everything they've done is based on Cthulhu and science fiction and evil aliens and stuff. So I actually have a pretty good appreciation for Cthulhu. Um, I got a I got a really good rejection letter based on a Cthulhu type story I wrote once. So oh, that's cool. Yeah, and I. So anyway, back to the original question, which was being excited about At the Mountains of Madness. If this movie ever actually got made, and I don't believe that it will, it would have been absolutely incredible. Del Toro is really good at monster design. He has the right sensibility for horror on the mind-blowing scale that a Cthulhu movie would have to be. He would have done this property such a service, and he would have done so much justice to it. And I really wish that that he'd gone ahead and done it. Um, I'm glad for his incredibly limited influence um, in The Hobbit. Um, I'm glad that we got to see his little his little male goblin in Goblin Town flying around a little bit. That's probably the only thing that's uh, that's left of his influence on the film. But um, yeah, oh, really? I, I, that's that's my guess. But I oh, I, okay. I think he would have been I think he would have made a great movie, even if he was going to have Tom Cruise be in it. It would have just come out fantastically. So I would have been oh. excited. I think it would have been. Yeah, great. I might have to. I might have to look that up now because that sounds pretty cool. Um, so I did find that comic. I actually bought it on my Kindle. Okay. So, um, it was actually from uh, Infestation Two, the one in, dealing with the Cthulhu mythos. Oh, okay. And it is. Uh, it features. It's a team up between Archibald, who's apparently a gray alien. Uh, the, you know, the t- stereotypical oh, gray, gray body okay. alien. All right. Introduced at the end of the first Infestation run. I just didn't read that comic. Okay. And then, of course, Bat Boy. And it's basically they're at um, they're at Area Fifty One. It gets attacked by you know tentacle monsters, yeah. and you know they have to fight them off. Again, it was it was pretty fun. And those those runs, Infestation and Infestation Two, are really fun. Like I said, um, you know they've got runs with Transformers. Mm-hmm. Um, Infestation Two had things like uh, Ninja Turtles and GI Joe, yeah. and things like that. So it was it was a really cool run. Um, I just didn't stick with it all the way oh okay but well I'd have yeah to... it, it was cool that's cool i'll have to check that out actually yeah but, definitely yeah um they should both be in trade paperbacks all right or apparently available on the kindle uh this episode of shallow cast is brought to you by umds and the amazon kindle hey the kindle is still i still sell the kindles at work well uh, some kindles at work okay okay um this next question is from at Trevor T on Twitter. I think we both know him as well. I think the at is silent. Oh, well. Whatever. Yeah. And his question is, out of all the different Godzillas in the different Godzilla movies, which one is the toughest version? Okay. And, I mean, I guess that's really kind of open to interpretation, Mm -hmm. depending on which series you're talking about, because you're talking about different origins especially if you get into uh you know Godzilla versus King Ghidorah where you've got a new Godzilla that as they say has absorbed more energy so now he's bigger and tougher okay so i mean it's uh, it's open to open t- interpretation i definitely have an idea of who i think is is mine um so i don't know if you want me to go first or uh so you can tell me how wrong i am or if you want to go first i can tell you how wrong you are i think uh i think that you can go first and then i will correct okay. you if you uh if you've screwed up i actually think that the the godzilla featured in uh giant monsters all out attack is actually considered the toughest version or could be considered the toughest version okay why um, why do you think that just because of his overall resilience just because he kind of shows a different overall methodology in his attacks and things mm-hmm. like that. You know, they talk about how he's a, a wraith possessed by all the souls lost during World War II. Mm-hmm. Um, and he just he just seems to be more powerful. I mean, heck, he pretty much toasts uh, Mothra and King Ghidorah and uh, poor old Baragon. Oh, yeah. But I think what really seals it for me is the fact that at the end of the at the end of the movie he is reduced to nothing but his giant heart, which is shown beating at the bottom of the ocean. Okay. 
So I definitely think that's why that's the uh, that's the toughest Godzilla. There are definitely some tough Godzillas out there, mm-hmm. <clears throat> except for uh, that unpleasantness back in 1998. That doesn't even count but, as Godzilla, though. So we're not going to mention true. that. Okay. Yeah. Too late. Already right, dead. That's, no, yeah, that's, that's not that's a Godzilla. My, so uh, yes. Okay. 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 But yes, that is that's my pick for the toughest Godzilla out of all the different movies, okay. even though he was only in one. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, actually, um, that was going to be my pick too. Really? For exactly the same reason. I mean, this is a Godzilla that's not... He's not just an animal con, uh, that's been altered by radioactivity. He's a, he's, a, he's a spiritual force. He's basically powered by ghosts. Um, the ghosts of the, of the countless people that died in Japan during World War II and during nuclear testing. So, I mean, this is a Godzilla that has supernatural power behind him. Not just the normal radioactivity that regular Godzilla has. He has all those abilities combined. So... He's almost like a little kid superhero. It's like, well, he has all the powers of all the other guys, and he has ghost powers, too. So he's just, he's, he's hands down, I would say, the most powerful and resilient and toughest of the Godzillas. I just, I don't see any, I don't see any arguing against that, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's not really, well, well, they could try and argue against it. We'll just tell them they're wrong. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, because they um, are wrong. So let's, uh, let's take one more question and then we'll just kind of move on to uh, another topic. Oh snap! Was that like a was that like a was that like a change topics noise? Well, uh, I, I guess it was. I, I wasn't quite ready to change topics yet, but I think I pushed the button anyway. I think, so I think you did. Um, so let's uh, so let's just do the one more question, like I said, and then we'll we'll change topics. Okay. Well, if we're doing uh, one more question and then changing topics, uh, I, let me ask. Let me read another Godzilla question then. Because I have one from a Tumblr friend of mine that goes by the name of Madame Scary Von Spooky Britches. And the good Madame asks, tell me words about your favorite non-Godzilla character. And Xander, tell me words about your favorite non-Sentai character. Oh, man. A favorite favorite non-Sentai character. Um, That's a broad category for you, That huh? is a broad category because I do like a lot of the things. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I, I mean, if I had to pick absolutely one... Um, it, it have to be Boba Fett. Um, I, oh Nathan, I know, I'm sure you know. I talk about Boba Fett a lot, and oh my god, there's there's been a lot of you know people make jokes over the years. What's the big fascination with <laughs> Boba Fett because he's hardly on screen? And I honestly, <laughs> I'm one of those people that I I can't explain it. I just really really like him. I okay. I don't I don't know. I mean I know why I like him now. He's you know, expanded universe stuff is is really cool, but I really like I you know I really like his design and everything. I like the stuff that's happened in the expanded universe. Um, his origin story's a little weak, but okay. but overall, I I still think he's really cool. I honestly don't know uh, why I started liking him. The earliest I could remember seeing him would be uh, back when Empire Strikes Back, the special edition, was released back into theaters, which I want to say was late 90s I really can't recall off the top of my head unfortunately but then again I guess that's why we have the internet um other than th- other than that I mean there's just he's, he's just awesome and and I'm you know I'm one of those people with a boba fetish because that's oh never been god said, is that no. joke that joke's never been done before right I hate right? puns so much I, oh god no so no so how about you, your your favorite non-giant monster character? My favorite character is people that don't make stupid puns. Um, oh my god, okay. Uh, this is a super broad category. Um, I, gosh. I mean, if I had to choose, like, a favorite video game character or something, um, I would probably choose somebody like Yoshi from Mario, or uh, King K. Rool from Donkey Kong Country, who are both giant lizards, as you may have. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if I was gonna choose like a TV character, I would definitely choose uh, Desmond from Lost, um, or uh, Dale Cooper from Twin Peaks. And then if I was gonna choose a movie character, um, hmm, I gosh, you know, I'm honestly not sure because there's so many different movies, and whatever character I choose. I would want to choose someone different as soon as I remember another character that I really liked. Right, right. Um, I don't know. Gosh, I you know I, I have different character, different favorites in a diff, in every single genre, but I don't think I have any one 
character, any one person or creation or creature that I prefer to Godzilla specifically. Like, I don't have a... There's Godzilla, and then there's this in my life. It's all just Godzilla and then everything else. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I like a lot of different characters. I mean, I like uh, Jubilee from the X-Men. I like uh, Princess Bubblegum from Adventure Time. I like basically all the Fraggles. Um, I like Spider-Man a lot. I love Wonder Woman. Uh, I like Superman a lot more than most people do. Um, yeah, Superman's Superman's pretty cool. It just depends on how he he's just being needs represented. To be, he needs to be written better most of the time. Mm-hmm. Is the only issue with him. Um, let me. Gosh, I like Gonzo and Kermit from uh, Muppets, obviously. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, I guess literary characters. I really like uh, Jonas from The Giver, and uh, Lucy Pevensey from uh, The Chronicles of Narnia. But I don't have like a specific one character I love just as much as or more than Godzilla. I don't think. Yeah, I could see. I could see that. I could definitely yeah. see that. Um, yeah, I mean that's. Yeah, great questions. Those were some great questions. Gives us a lot to. Uh, gives us a lot to talk about. Yeah, thanks to uh, Captain Midnight and uh, Unique and Trevor. I'm sorry, Captain Midnight and Madam Scary von Spooky Britches and Trevor T. Name dropper. I'm. I apologize. I didn't mean to drop their names. I wanted to carry them and present them. Neatly wrapped inside their usernames and Twitter handles. You dropped them all over the place. I dropped them on the floor, and then I stepped on one of them accidentally, and I'm sorry. Way to go. You had one job. I, I had two jobs, apparently. This is the second one job you've given me. Wow. We need to do better employment screenings over here at Shadowcast. Hey, I, this, I hired you for this podcast. I just said my mother left it to me. You can't sneak in here and try to take over my podcast. Just watch me. Hey, I will fire you like I fired the last guy, all right? If you want to end up on the streets with Wally, then that is totally fine. Oh, Wally. Oh, fuck Wally. He didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was uncharacteristically harsh of me. I apologize. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I okay, thought it was so... funny. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be harsh on Wally. He's... He's a troublemaker. All right, that's so what, let's, that's uh, what they always say. You got to be harsh on Wally. I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. So uh, yeah, continue. I apologize. So let's uh, let's switch gears a little bit. Um, All right, Na- uh, Nathan, what you what have you been up to, man? Oh, I was I was gonna be up to uh, segueing into the change topics noise. Oh yeah, there is a change topic noise. I'm gonna hit the button on time this time. So here I go. Here goes the button. Here, is that it? That, that's it. Yep. Isn't that awesome? I liked it. I liked it. It's pretty yeah. fun. We have yes. more fan mail too. I might want to go back to a couple of these. We might, yeah. Um, I, yeah. But anyway, how how have I been doing? Like, just like in my life in general. Yeah, 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 man. Just like how's, um, how's life? I've been all right. Um, I am rereading. I'm I'm rereading a lot of Stephen King books right now because what I do is I don't read anything of his for a long time. And then for some reason, I just kind of feel like I want to read a lot of it at once. And so I reread Under the Dome, and I posted like a little thing with my thoughts on the story after I'd finished reading it. And actually, that's on my Tumblr. Uh, if you go to my, if you go to nathansaurus.tumblr.com and you search for the Under the Dome tag, it should be one of the only things there. I wrote like my thoughts on the ending of the story, and obviously that's pretty spoiler heavy. But um, I'm, I'm reading. I'm curious needful- to see how it's going to be handled in the TV show because. Yeah, honestly, that I don't think that could be properly handled in the TV See, show. I'm not even sure if they'll bother bringing it up in the show uh-huh. because I, the show is going to be it's going to be they're going to want to take that show they're going to want to make the show continue for you know several years. It's going to be a multiple seasons thing. True, and they're not going to want to introduce something that could be first of all that could include a decisive ending so quickly, right. and secondly, they're not going to want to do anything that would you know shake audiences up that much and make them abandon the show in yeah. droves. Which yeah. was an issue Lost had in some of its later seasons. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it got you know I don't think it got anywhere near as bad toward the end as a lot of people seem to think mm-hmm. it did. But that's that's mainly what I've been doing. I've been reading a lot of Stephen King. Um, yeah. I'm rereading Needful Things, and when that's done, I'm gonna I'm I'm also planning um, the next thing I want to start writing. So I'm working on a story or at least the outline for one, and I'm reading a lot, which is always what gets me in the mood to start writing. Again. Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'm trying to get back into reading myself. There's some stuff that. Uh... I want to start rereading Lemony Snicket. Um, you need to, because I want to do a events. Lemony Snicket episode. Yeah, but I know uh, it's weird because I get into Stephen King kicks too, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. just because 
just because I really like Stephen King. I mean, when I was in high school, that was pretty much when I fell into Stephen King. Although mm-hmm. I had read, I think I'd read it when I was in, uh, I was in middle school. And I don't know if I've, I've mentioned this yet, but um, I, I like most people have a fear of clowns, and it's really not like a an absolute phobia. It's mm-hmm. really more just kind of a demonic possession. Uh, yeah, excuse me, the the demonic. Um, presentation of clowns is what that is whole what, trope of like clowns yeah. is otherworldly demons yeah. and stuff yeah and and um i actually saw on tumblr a little factoid that apparently tim curry's characterization just overall portrayal of pennywise was so creepy that pretty much everybody everybody on set avoided him when they weren't shooting and my response to that i didn't reblog it because we all know what happened last time i reblogged something with snark <laughs> was was my th- my thought I saw that well I quickly passed by because anytime I see Pennywise I'm so fucking scarred by that yeah, goddamn I for- I movie forgot which you were like traumatized by that movie which I, I, I tried le- to not bring yeah. it up which I learned it's... years ago that didn't make the case any better that it was a made for TV mini series like series yeah and I'm just like you gotta be fucking kidding me yeah. and yeah this this is one of those things that gets me to be rather profane um, but my res- my my mental response to that after quickly skipping the picture and reading the caption was, yeah, no fucking shit. <laughs> I mean, and I love Tim Curry, but Jesus fucking Christ, the last, I mean, I tried to read it again just because it's overall a pretty good story. It's a I very tr- well-written book, yeah. It's just long as hell. I tried reading it's, it a yeah. few years ago, and every time Pennywise talked in that fucking book, there was Tim Curry's voice in the back of my head reading it, and I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> nope, I am taking this back to the library. Wow. I, yeah, that yeah, that movie scarred me pretty bad. I would um, I I would be interested to see a source for this claim that everybody avoided him on set because I you know I don't know that I believe that. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's true that I'd like to see a source. You know, I was gonna source you to that to the post itself, but I, mm-hmm. I get what you're saying there. Yeah, I um, mean the, I mean you know I've seen the post I've seen the post you're talking about. Yeah. Um, but I'm just like okay, every time I hear stories like this, like. Um, everybody avoided this guy on set because he was really mean, or everybody avoided this char- this girl because she was in character the whole time and it scared people. I'm trying to it's think like, what it, cause I've heard. Because yeah. I've heard other stories like that before, and I'm trying to remember. There's another really, really prevalent one, and I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh, the I, one that's going around on Tumblr right now is supposedly uh, Bob Hoskins and Dustin Hoffman in Hook um, intentionally played uh, Captain Hook and Mr. Smee as a gay couple. <laughs> what? That there's there there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a post going around about how they they're supposedly claiming that they did that and Steven Spielberg got really mad at them for it. I mean, and, I I certainly have nothing against that. I just think it's very it's it's a humorous. It just claim strikes me as so made. apocryphal. It's just like it came out of nowhere, like years upon years after the fact, and I'm just like, I don't know that this is true. Yeah, I don't care because it makes it makes sense, but I'm just like that doesn't. I don't know if I believe this mm-hmm. is what actually happened. Is all. I wish I could remember. I wish I could remember what that other movie was, where the character was just so intimidating that everyone was just. It had something to do with the chemistry. Like it was an intention. It was supposedly an intentional decision made by the director to help improve the overall chemistry of the characters. And I cannot, for the life of me, remember what movie it was supposed to be. Well, I remember movie trivia like. Um... You know, uh, Steven Spielberg supposedly distributed... No, sorry, not Steven Spielberg. George Lucas supposedly distributed fake pages from Empire Strikes Back, so everybody thought Darth Vader was saying he killed Luke's father. And then during the film release, it came out that he you know, he said that he was Luke's father. Right. I've heard stuff like that. I've heard um, the one about Empire to the Caribbean 2 when uh, Barbosa comes back. Everybody supposedly thought it was going to be a different character, so their shock is genuine when it's Barbosa. Um, oh really? Know, that's pretty cool. Yeah, supposedly, yeah, yeah. Which I don't know if that's true or not. Um, and then there's the one about you know obviously the alien one that nobody knew about the chestburster alien scene until it actually started happening. Mm-hmm. So their fear is genuine. And I don't yeah. know if that's true because that seems impossible to. I remember. To I hide. remember yeah, I remember seeing like a like a documentary about it a few years ago, okay. and and I don't remember them saying that they didn't know about it. I think they were just kind of surprised just by the overall imagery because like I remember one of the the female actresses is. Um, talking about it's like all of a sudden we have this giant penis staring up at us. Is it okay to see that on TV? So I just thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I I can't for the life of me think of that movie. So you got um, the conversation back to penises again. Oh my gosh, 
Yeah. I'm gonna pull a yeah. Gavin. I'm gonna pull a Gavin free. And I don't know what that means. Yes, I know you don't, but the internet does. And as we've gone over before, that's what's important. As long as the internet gets it, <laughs> then it's fine. yeah. It but doesn't I'm matter gonna... if Nathan's keeping up with the conversation. Nope, as long gonna, as the internet, as long as Google Gavin exists, free and, and somehow manage to steer the conversation back to penises with a flick of the wrist. I yeah. It's like other penises. Like okay, I right, let's let's move on because yeah, yeah. Let's move on. So uh, I'll hit that. Uh, I'll hit that button again, and then we'll move on to the the next subject. Um, not quite sure what it's gonna be, but let's hit the button and find well, out. I'll hit the button. Yeah. So here we go. Okay. Um, I am loving that button. Is that yeah. sexual? No. 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 Okay. Okay. I'm just making sure. Um. Yeah. All right. Well, do you want to read more? Questions yeah, or... let's read some more questions. I like right. questions. I like questions too. Let me go back to the. I'm gonna go back to the official Shallowcast Facebook page, which I created and is pretty rad. And you guys should like us on Facebook, and also follow us on Twitter and check out our Tumblr and send things to our houses and call our moms and tell them you think we're doing a good job. But anyway, on a hang on on the official Shallowcast page, I solicited fan mail from our viewers and. So that kind of backfired on me a little bit earlier. But we also did get some decent questions, too. Yeah. And I'm going to read this one. It is from... Uh, 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 who is this? Oh, um, it's from my mom, actually. Your mom? Yeah, my mom. I have one of those. I do, too. That's cool. She that turns sense. 50 on the 19th. My mom turned 50 on the 15th. Maybe they're related. Maybe. Is that how that works? I, I think so. I mean, I, that, I, by, I think so. Our birthdays are what a month apart in the same yeah. year. So that does that make us related? I mean, probably. Awesome. I, I'm cool with that. Yeah. yeah. Me too. Yeah. Okay. So my mom asks. Sorry. Let's try this. Sorry. Black Pearl asks, "How many times did you stand in line at midnight to get the latest Harry Potter book?" For me, that was a round, resounding zero. Um, now I did huh. when, when Deathly Hollows came out. I did. Mm-hmm. I was working that night, and I honestly can't remember if I, because I, I worked at at the time when it was a thing. I worked at Hollywood Video. Okay. And, and you know, we so we closed at midnight, and I can't recall if it was a closing shift, and I went over, and of course, you know, they were open for the launch, or mm-hmm. if I just closed at some time at some time at night, and then I went over. Or I didn't. I didn't close. Excuse me. I was off sometime during the night, and then I just went over to the bookstore and picked it up. I can't remember. I know there was an event, but I can't remember the time frame. But yeah, Deathly Hollows, I think, is the only one that I actually like went to the bookstore to, to physically like pick up the the weekend it came out. Because I definitely bought it and read it the weekend it came out. But I never did okay. any of the you know the waiting in line, uh, dressed as a wizard or anything like that. Okay, you you were dressed as a wizard just on your own time. It wasn't yeah. in line for things. I, I've been compared to Harry Potter before in terms of looks, especially when movie four came out and I was growing my hair long. I uh, I guess I can kind of see that. Maybe. I even have a scar oh. on my forehead from oh, when I was you... from when I was a baby. Oh, well, that's that was because you got in that fight with that other baby. That wasn't because yeah. you got attacked by a dark wizard. That was my fucking juice box. God damn it! You know, I I don't know why you got to keep bringing that up because I was also a baby, so I wasn't trying to start shit. I was just being a baby, and babies don't know anything. So my juice chill box. out. I okay. I will buy you another one. All right. Can we not bring this up in the middle of the podcast? <laughs> Fine. Jeez. Moving on. God. Um, okay. Uh, how many times did I stand in line at midnight to get the latest Harry Potter book? I feel like I suspect this may be a loaded question on the part of my mother because she was with me every time I stood in line for a Harry Potter book. Um, I want to say two because I believe the way it worked was my mom bought the first two books and she read them to make sure they were appropriate for me to read. And then when the third one came out, we went to the bookstore and we bought it at midnight and then she read it again and then she let me read it when she was done. I think that's how it worked, but it's also possible that she bought the first three books and we only waited in line for the fourth one, by which point I was reading them on my own because she was like, whatever, you're old enough now. But um, it was only for either the third and fourth book or just the fourth book. Um, And after that, after the fifth book, I believe... I was living in Russia, and I didn't have access to the books in English unless my grandparents bought them and mailed them to me. So I was getting them a couple a couple months after they were released. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So I actually, um, I actually got the whole Snape kills Dumbledore spoiler way, 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 way before I had a chance to read the books at all because the books had been out for like a month at that point. So I had no chance of avoiding that whatsoever. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. But yeah, that's. 
yeah, I, I really like the Harry Potter books. Um, it's weird, and I don't know if it's just my taste in books or just, mm-hmm. just my tastes overall are, are I don't want to say growing because I don't want to imply that the Harry Potter is for younger audiences. We'll save that uh-huh. for the Twilight and Hunger Games discussions. Oh, snap. Okay. Wow, um, that's, I don't see, I don't know about Hunger Games. I've never read it, but uh, anytime we take a cheap shot against Twilight is okay in my book. Right. Um, in my book. But I just, books. to me, lately, it doesn't seem like, I like I haven't been, like we were talking about rereading Stephen King and Let Me uh-huh. Stick It. Um, I I'm not being pulled back into the the universe at all. I don't feel compelled to reread those books. Mm-hmm. And I think it might have to do with the fact that because the 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 cinematic series just finished up over the last few years and you know the internet is still tum- uh, the internet is still tumblered. The internet well, they- <laughs> They're, t- they're tumbler rank about it. <laughs> yes. The internet is still saturated with, with gifts and references and jokes and things mm-hmm. like that. Um, um, that reminds me, I don't know if anyone's done a Half-Blood Prince bitch I might be reference, but we might have to get on that. I already made my The Hobbit one, though. I'm good on those. I don't okay. want to... I don't want to kill the joke. You can Photoshop that one, though, if you want. I suck at Photoshop, though. You kind of do. You're really bad at it. Oh, my God. But I, I just, I know, it's just weird. I mean, there's nothing against the books. They're obviously uh, very popular. I just don't feel compelled to reread them. See, for me, um, you know, I think, they're, I think they're pretty well-written books. I feel like J.K. Rowling suffered from the same issue as George Lucas in later years, where she got big enough that nobody wanted to tell her no because her editors start to get a lot more lenient with her. Mm -hmm. There are a lot more redundant phrases and a lot more issues and a lot more instances where she says that, where she rephrases herself in really awkward ways. And there's a few uh, writing quirks I notice her using in every single book. And I feel like her editors just got to a point where like, well, it's Rowling and we got to get this out to make billions upon billions of dollars Mm -hmm. and pounds. So I don't want to spend too long editing this thing. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I guess I wasn't really in tune to that. I, I see what you're. I see what you're saying, though. I know because I know there's been criticisms about that. I just don't know what they are off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, I mean, really, the only one I can think of was the the Cho Chang thing, and that was a little odd. Um, I don't think an editor has the power to go back and say, "No, you're wrong to include this character or the story arc or yeah. his name." But I noticed like little quirks about how she phrases stuff and how she repeats certain things, and I just like I don't I feel like an editor would have would have chopped that up if she was less famous. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But, but yeah, like you said, I I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. No, you. no, go ahead, man. I was just gonna say, like you said, I was agreeing with you actually, so I guess it's okay to interrupt you. Yeah. Um, that I don't feel like I don't feel too drawn back into the world either because I mean, and for me that ended when I read the last book. Uh-huh. Like I didn't watch the movies past Order of the Phoenix. And so when the books ended, I was like, okay, my Harry Potter journey is done, and I'm fine with that. Right. And so I never got into the nostalgic, sobbing, reblogging gifs of Molly Weasley shouting at uh, Helena Bonham Carter playing Helena Bonham Carter. <laughs> I never got sad about the day that the Battle of Hogwarts took place because, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because my, my Harry Potter journey, my experience was over when the books were done, and yeah. I'm fine with that. I'm content to let it lie. Yeah, just I like think all those bodies at Hogwarts. All those <laughs> countless bodies of dead students and dead adults and giants and centaurs and house elves and everybody else that just got murdered by dark wizards. There was a lot of death. So many deaths. And even even people that we loved, characters we really started to appreciate, were killed horribly. Yeah. Do you want to think about that for a little while? All those All those beloved characters that were just murdered in really vicious ways? <sighs> yeah. Lots of lots of bodies. Yeah, lots of lots of bodies. Um, so yeah, next topic. Let's not talk about lots of bodies. Oh yeah, let's yeah. I okay. Um, you want to read another question from the Facebook page? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Hold on a second. Let me pull them up. Hold on. I think they're actually linked from from my Facebook because I shared the link. So oh, go yeah. to my Facebook and look at it from there. Okay yeah. Let's see here. Um, here is one from. Let me see here. I need oh, to. Read? What? I would. Oh, I was just gonna say, read one from Trevor next because we've got a few from him, and I want to alternate between him and other people. Oh yeah. So this is another one from uh, Trevor T, and he asks: In the world of non Godzilla, non Godzilla Tohu Kaiju, 
Which movie did you like better, King Kong Escapes or War of the Gargantuas? And I Gosh. don't know. Is, is King Kong Escapes the the prelude to War of the Gargantuas, or at least is it supposed to be? Because I've never heard slash seen that one. King Kong Escapes is a pretty obscure one, even by Toho non Godzilla standards. Um, if I remember right, this is the one where King Kong fights Mechanic Kong and a couple other monsters, and that's literally the only thing I know about it. I haven't seen it either. But I know I know what Mechanic Kong looks like, and he's got a really ridiculously cool and funny and silly design. Yeah, and that's yeah, all I it is the yeah. yep. It I'm is gonna I'm one. gonna go to Wikipedia really fast. I'm still on the Jaws page of Wikipedia <laughs> because of earlier. Yeah, that was that was pretty uh, that was pretty funny, and that's actually a reference to an episode oh, that is going to be heard later. Okay, um, this okay. I actually probably should watch uh, King Kong Escapes because it has Gorosaurus in it. And Gorosaurus is a kaiju that really got showcased in Destroy All Monsters. That's right. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. He actually helps uh, He helps fight King Ghidorah, and his size is increased to be about 50 meters high like Godzilla's. Oh, he was awesome. originally 35 meters high, and then he got sized up a little bit. Right, right. But, um, yeah, so we, so we obviously have never seen King Kong, es- King Kong Escapes. We just, we just know about it. But um, even if we had seen it, yeah, War of the Gargantuas, um, for those that don't know, as, as we mentioned before, you know, we do Twitter in the movie, and I think War of the Gargantuas was, was actually the first Twitter in the movie that I participated in. I don't know if it was the absolute first, but it was definitely one of the first. I believe it was the first, um, but I wasn't really following the Twitter in a movie tweets that didn't come from people I knew. Right. So, like, at the time, I was like, I don't know this guy, so I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know what his deal is. And so I didn't really see tweets from you if you were tweeting them during previous epi- in- right. iterations of Twitter in a movie. I don't know if you were around for those. Right, and I don't, I don't remember. I think I follow. I think I was following Captain Midnight from something else, and then yeah. and then he he was talking about it, and that's when I started joining you guys. So mm-hmm. we didn't really. I mean, this is actually the movie was actually kind of what started our whole friendship because yeah, it, we're actually best friends because of this. Yes, movie. we are. It actually. Uh, has, in my opinion, still one of my most my finest comedic moments. Um, <laughs> I would agree with that. And and I I don't think I've I've ever topped it because I've never gotten a response like the one I got from you, which yeah. is your <laughs> concern that you woke up everybody in the house with how loud you were laughing. I think that's the hardest I've laughed at something you've said to me, um, possibly ever. I'm I'm trying to think of other times. But, um, I mean, you know, first of all, you're not really that funny most of the time. Yeah, I Secondly, know. I just can't remember, um, I can't remember laughing that hard. Yeah, it part. was, it was, it was pretty spectacular. It um, was really good. <laughs> and I, like, do you want to, should we, like, preface it with the actual, the reason it's funny? Because otherwise it's going to be out of context and not make any sense. I mean, I, yeah, I, I can't even remember why it's funny. I just, Oh, I, just, I know why it's funny. Well, then you, fine, then you go. Well, I don't, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to talk over you. Um, but okay, in uh, got in Godzilla films and kaiju films in general, um, a common enemy. Uh, sorry, a common weapon used by the military are uh, d- giant tanks with uh, freezing rays on them. These tanks are traditionally referred to as mazers. Um, and there was an internet meme going around a couple of years ago in which a character from Dragon Ball Z was photoshopped into saying, I'm a fire in my laser. And so Xander waited until the appropriate time in the film to combine this thing with this meme to incredibly effective result as far as I was concerned. Yes, it was. It involved me busting up. Busting up. No, that's what, you, that's what happened to you. You busted up. I did, laughing. I busted out. Out. The now iconic phrase... I'm a fire in my mazer, and it, <laughs> and it was just, it was just spectacular. Um, it was pretty good. I mean, I I laugh now hearing it, but that was, that was quite literally the statement that led to our friendship. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> I mean, giant robots, giant monsters, everything was from this, this movie that that. A bunch of random dudes decided to watch one night and then and make fun of on Twitter, yeah. Yeah, and then friendships happened, and look and where we good. are now. Yes, we're making a podcast. 
Yeah, we do. So I would say in the world of non-Godzilla kaiju and non-Toho kaiju, the movie we liked better is unanimously War, War of the, the Gargantuas. Gargantuas. Yes. That's right. You can actually... Um, there's, you know, there's actually a high-grade... Uh, I guess it's technically an action figure. I don't really know because it's the Mazer itself. But there's oh, okay. an actual uh, War of the Gargantuas Mazer. And it's kind oh, of I've like a little... Oh, I've seen that on Amazon. It's kind of like a little pack and They actually have the little Gargantuas. And, That's so cool. And I, I don't want to shell out the money for it right now because I can't. And I'll yeah. get killed for it. But uh-huh. it's it's definitely something that I think we we both need to own one day. Maybe it could be one of those things where, like, we own it each. We ship it back and forth, you know, and own it. <laughs> we have custody of yeah. it. Okay. Three, we each get it three days a week and alternating Sundays. Well, I don't. I feel like three days a week is the max because we're going to spend time shipping it back and forth to each other. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. So well, and yeah, it is on it is on Amazon. I should just buy it someday. Yeah. So in conclusion, War of the Gargantuas and uh, Shallowcast is brought to you by UMD, the PlayStation Portable, Amazon.com, and the Amazon Kindle. Look at those sponsors. I know. If only they were actually giving us money instead yeah, of no just kidding. being dumbasses. Yeah. Although I think if the UMD was giving us money, we'd have to <laughs> give it back. We'd have like we'd get like a penny <laughs> in the mail every couple months Here from the go. from the one guy that's buying UMDs for ninety nine cents at the dollar store. Yeah. <laughs> it's sitting on it. it it's Final Wars is sitting on his shelf next to the ring, and oh my god, the ring! And uh, I want to say it was the Exorcism of Emily Rose. And the entire the entire run of Tailspin on UMD. <laughs> Dude, I would buy that for a dollar. <laughs> Tailspin was my fucking jam. I would I would buy the, it, no, but no, not dude. on UMD. <laughs> dude, this is this is how you know Tailspin is my fucking jam. My fucking dad posted is the Baloo link. from Tailspin. Oh no, 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 no he. Okay. No, no, no. You know what? No, sorry. I posted the theme from Tailspin <laughs> onto Facebook, and he commented with the fact that I used to watch it all the time. Oh, okay. But yeah, no, Tailspin was my shit, dude. That was. I liked Bonkers. I watched Bonkers pretty I, pretty frequently. I don't know if I watched it frequently. I definitely knew of it. I just can't remember watching it with any type of consistency. So I liked it. So, uh, yeah. So, next question... All right, what, uh, what do you want to do for the next question? Which, which um, are we let me see here. Let me see who's asking us questions. Um, it looks like we have a question from... Hold on a second. Let me get her name right. Dizzy Hellfire. Oh, I know her. And she's asking us, how do I send fan mail? Oh, that's a good question. It is a very good question because people might not know. It's true. Um... You can you can send fan mail a couple of different ways. Um, you can certainly send us an ask or a fan mail on Tumblr at mm-hmm. uh, <clears throat> excuse me show thirty seven dot tumblr dot com. Mm-hmm. You can leave a because because I think I think asking for for questions when we're going to record is actually a pretty good strategy. But you I could always so but you can always drop a comment on our Facebook page whenever um, you know and you want to ask us a question you can drop by our facebook page and nathan you're the one that set us up what's the link for that facebook page why i'm glad you asked that xander the shallowcast facebook page is at facebook.com slash shallowcast the shallowcast tumblr is at shallow37.tumblr.com we also have a twitter which i believe is um is it just at shallow37 i want to say it's at shallow37 media let me I see i feel like here. it doesn't yes. have media. no no it is oh does it, does it is have media at, okay it is at shallow37 yeah okay yep uh shallow37 media is our youtube channel right we are just all over the inner box we, with this thing the inner box yes well i was gonna say inner webs and that's really lame but inner box sounds kind of edgy and cool uh-huh it's like it's new it's like you're on the myspace you're on the face box you're doing all the internets Doing all the internets. All the internets, sometimes multiple ones at once. Mm hmm. And sometimes not at all. Not at all. Or just doing them all really poorly, like I apparently am tonight. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, pardon me. That's how you send us fan mail, though. Um, yeah. You could also, Short and simple. you could also, like, write a letter, I guess, if you wanted to. Um, and Xander's address, of course. No. No. Um, you could write it. You could you could uh, send me a Facebook message. You could tweet at either of us. Um, our twitters are at Nathan Soros and at yeah. Xander Grimm with two M's, respectively. With two M's, yes. With two M's. I said two M's. Yep. And if but you those, want, yes. Yeah. And if you want, if you want to make absolutely sure that your question gets read on the podcast, you could always send us a donation at our PayPal address. And that oh, address hey. is what? Huh? Wait, wait. Do we have that? I don't I, think that's a thing. Yes, it is. 
but we're not famous or rich or good looking enough to have PayPal accounts for people to donate to. Rich enough? Are you pulling the Zach Braff over there? I don't. Who? Okay, very briefly, Zach Braff, who was on Scrubs, uh, okay. went to qu- went to Kickstarter to crowdfund his latest directorial attempt. And yeah, I'm was... going to the Wikipedia page for Zach Braff. Yes, and there was some, there was some oh. uproar. Yeah, there was some uproar. He was the voice of Chicken Little in the Disney movie. Yes. Okay. Yes, and there was some uproar over the fact that this guy, who most assuredly must have lots of money left over from whatever, was uh-huh. basically now begging for it. So it, it's just a I'm, – I'm trying to make a reference, and you're not getting it, which is going to happen many more times over the years, I'm sure. Okay. But yeah, so – okay, fine. I won't ask the people for money this second. Okay, that's probably a good policy. I feel like it's better to not ask everybody for money until they have a reason to give us money. Well, my birthday is in a month and a half. And well, my in... birthday is in August. It is. So there. Matter of fact, isn't it exactly two months from today? Three months from today, excuse me. I can't No, add. my my birthday is the 14th, not the 17th. Oh, so, close no. enough. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I'm going to be really sad if you say happy birthday to me on the 17th, because I'll have gone like five days thinking you forgot. I'm never going to forget. 15, 16, 17, I just days. didn't. Re- I'm early, so I didn't forget. I just didn't remember. There's yeah, a difference. Two, okay, but two months early for my birthday is just as bad as four days late. That's worse, because then when my birthday actually happens, you're going to have forgotten, or you're going to be like, well, I said happy birthday two, two months ago. And that's not going to help me at all. <laughs> it was a preemptive happy birthday. I don't like that. I don't like preemptive happy birthdays, especially if they're two months ahead of time. That's that's way too that's way too soon. Oh goodness. Okay, so uh I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> we okay. didn't we I didn't wish you it so you could like it. Well, I should like it. <sighs> okay. Moving on. Okay, um, fine, moving on, God. Hey, you know what I like? And we've what talked like? about it a lot. I like what super- have we talked about? We, we talked about it a little bit earlier with the questions, but I like superheroes a lot. I like superheroes too, actually. Can we That's just, kind of weird. Yeah. Can, we, can we talk about Avengers Alliance for a little bit, just briefly? Um, or do you want to save that for an episode? I was just going to say I'll allow it after pausing dramatically, oh. and then you talked in the middle of my pause. Well, that's what you get for being dramatic, as we've... Well, of course, gone over. Yeah, before. apparently, whenever I'm dramatic, I get shot down. <laughs> so I guess I gotta okay. just not do that. Yeah. For those that anyway. don't know, uh, Marvel Avengers Alliance is a is a game on Facebook, a social game on Facebook, and we all know how everybody loves those. Oh and, right. And Nathan actually got me into it, and I'd gotten requests, and I'd seen ads for it, and I'm very very wary of. Stuff that I see on Facebook, stuff I see on Facebook in general, but uh, especially stuff that has to deal with you know, you know, pop culture or copyrighted material because there's not exactly an easy, easy way, because I'm lazy, it has to be easy, mm-hmm. to tell whether or not it's an actual <laughs> licensed product. Oh, okay. And then you were going and then you were going on about it for, for a little bit. I'm like, okay, I'll give it a shot. And it turns out a lot of my friends had played it and for good reason. The game's pretty awesome. It's um, just pretty simple, you know, mission-based, squad-based combat, and then, of course, there's different mm-hmm. classes and leveling up and things like that, but it's just, it's a lot It's a lot of fun. Um, they're doing an Iron Man 3 tie-in right now where you can actually uh, recruit Pepper Potts' Armored Alter Ego Rescue, mm-hmm. who's actually impressingly good. Um, impressingly, impressively good excuse me but i just i just wanted to mention it just because it's really fun and if, i mean if you're a fan of avengers and social games and mm-hmm. things like that i think you should definitely check it out yeah no it's actually pretty cool um even for a facebook game and facebook games are generally horrible and worthless but this one's pretty fun for spending like i don't know an hour a day messing around with superheroes yeah and it's, it's definitely introduced us to some new characters that we didn't know about um Including what are apparently sentinel sleeper agents that are actual humans, just implanted with sentinel technology. So that's mm-hmm. comics are weird, and and of course that's going to have to be a whole other episode. Yeah, I want to do a comics episode because there's a couple online friends of mine that are really knowledgeable about DC and Marvel, and I would want to get uh, Madame Sc- Scary Von Spooky Britches along for one of those, or I would want to get um, 
sorry, Spooky Month, Scary Witches, I apologize, um, or uh, Menshevixen. I would want to get either of them all around right, right, right. to uh, yeah. do a shallow cast with me. Yeah. So, so I guess we could save that for a for a uh, superhero themed episode. Yeah, I'm wondering but if it is a cool game. Yeah, I'm wondering if maybe that just just kind of thinking off the top of my head, maybe we should wait till the the end the you know the end of the year, just because there is a lot of comic book stuff happening this year. Oh, okay. I mean, you've got you've got Iron Man three just came out. You've got uh, <clears throat> excuse me, you have Kick Ass two coming out. You've got the Wolverine, Thor two. So it's gonna be a good year for comic book movies. So I, I'm I think not gonna see any of those <laughs> except for Kick Ass two because Kick Ass one was awesome. Yeah, well, awesome. Yeah, Jim Carrey's in Kick Ass two. That's gonna be pretty funny. Um, I like that because they got Nicolas Cage in the last one. He's actually surprisingly good. So I think that uh, Jim Carrey will be surprisingly good in the second one. <laughs> when was the last time somebody put Nick Cage in surprisingly good in the same sentence? I think that was the first time in the history of humanity that anyone's put Nick Cage and good in the same sentence. <laughs> Shallow cast. We're setting records. And we're making fun of celebrities. Now can we have some money? I, I don't think that's how it works either. Oh, God damn it. I know, I know. We'll get, look, we'll get money. There'll be, this podcast will become lucrative. It'll just take a while. That's all. I'm going to get my own money with blackjack well, we're gonna, and hookers. I, uh, okay. I feel like that's not, like, that's what you spend the money on, though. That's not what gets you money. Yeah, it depends on which end of the transaction you are. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Is that, I think that's a good note to go out on. Is it really? Is my so. is my disapproval always going to be the tone by which this podcast is ended? <laughs> Why not? I mean, I don't know. I guess I'm okay with that. <laughs> but it's not really this... disapproval, is it? Oh, I suppose this is just. I don't know. This was a discouraging episode for me, though, because I mean, everybody was dogging on my singing, and then he made a pun, and now I'm just d- disapproving again. And we talked about your penis, and it's just like I was not mine. It well, was okay. A penis. We talked about a hypothetical penis. Which is almost worse, because it's like a ghost penis, and I don't know where that is. But it could be in my house, and I don't like that. <laughs> it could be Buddhas and living in your cereal. What? <laughs> That's another reference that you'll never get. Stop making references to things I don't get! Yeah, it's so much goddamn fun. Uh, it'd be funnier if it wasn't so easy. Eh. Once again, I... depends on which side you are. Ugh. Okay, so... I guess relativism was the theme for this episode of Shallow Cast. <laughs> also, fan mail, which keep it coming. Fan mail, yeah, keep it coming. Because first of all, it's nice to know we have fans. Secondly, it's nice to know they can type coherently. And uh, thirdly, it's nice to interact with the people that like the thing we're doing, which is this thing, and it's a good thing, and I have fun with the thing. Even though it ends on disapproval. Yeah, it tends to. I think I think the last episode ended with me scolding you about turning my good friend Bonaventure's name into a dirty joke. Yeah. Yep, okay, but, yep. So, is this the end? That's the end. All right, well, um, in that case, uh, thank you for listening to Shallow Cast. I have been Nathan Soros, and I plan on being that for at least a little while longer. And I have been Xander Grimm, and I plan on being that for another week or so, maybe? We'll All right, see. yeah, I'll, okay. Like, I'll get my calendar out. I'll tell you what, how it looks for me um, a couple months from now. Yeah. I'll let you know. All right, sounds but good. But a couple weeks, at least, is what you're thinking? Yeah, yeah, a couple weeks, I think. All right. Okay. Well, um, in that case, we can be reached at uh, fwl.tumblr.com and uh, Xander Grimm on Twitter, and uh, Grimm is with two M's. And the Z is an X. Sounds like Z, but it's an X. Yes, it's Xander Grimm as an X-A-N-D-E-R-G-R-I-M-M, because some of us have to have difficult usernames. It's not that bad. I know, I know. I'm sorry. That was uncalled for. (sighs) This is your third one job that you had. You know, I was hoping that you were going to say my uh, usernames because I said all of yours, and you just kind of dropped well, the yes, ball okay, there. Fine. So you had fine. one job that you just fucked yeah. up. All right, whatever. You are Nathan Soros at a lot of I places. Am. You are Nathan <laughs> Soros on Twitter. And, and Tumblr. Yeah, and Tumblr, nathansoros.tumblr.com. And actually Instagram, too, which, I mean, nobody cares about because all I've posted so far are pictures of the things in my house and my I think people stopped caring back about back Instagram when, when they got bought by Facebook. I some people I know still use it. My friend Birdsy uses uses Instagram still. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Um, so that's one person that'll probably follow me if she listens to this podcast, which I don't think she does. Oh, well, she should start. What's wrong I'll, with I'll her? Mention, Why does she want to listen? Men- 
I'll tell her that I mentioned her, and then she'll be tempted to listen just so she'll find out what I said about her, and to be like, oh, that was really benign and boring, and I don't care at all, actually. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. that's so it. That was, a, that was Shallowcast. Um, oh, you want to talk about what's going to happen next time on Shallowcast? Oh, yes. Next time on Shallowcast. Hats. Why do we wear them? It's not that cool. Unless you're in Norway. You, yeah. Also next time on Shallowcast, special guest Nicki Minaj. Ooh, I like yeah, that's gonna be Minaj. good. I do too. Yeah, I hope I'm she brings the super bass. I she usually she tends to like I we I I talked to her about it and she has she's having problems getting it to fit um, down the street onto my house because it's like the size of a semi truck, and so we're gonna have to close down the street for her to get it into my neighborhood. Actually, it's not gonna actually be in my house; it's gonna be pointed at my window. Oh, okay. Other than that, though, it's gonna be pretty rad. So stick around for shallow cast with special guest Nicki Minaj and uh, also hats. And Norway. Hey, and I, maybe we can get Nikki to do a report on hats from Norway. Maybe we should have sent. Maybe we should have said that to her ahead of time because now it's like a scheduling issue. Oh, hey, I got one more. I got one more thing I want to do yeah. before we end the show. Yeah. Um, I think that we should give a special thanks to the provider of our new theme song music and our new uh, change topic sound. Oh yeah, that yeah, music yeah. came from uh, Incompetech and was composed by Kevin McLeod. All their music was available at incompetech.com slash music slash royalty free. So we didn't have to pay for it, but we're using it with a lot of gratitude and appreciation. Yes, we really do. We really do appreciate it, Mr. McLeod. A McLeod, I believe. Also, um, I want to thank Bonaventure once again for making us an amazing and marvelous logo, which is still my avatar basically everywhere online. Is it because it's prettier than you are in real life? I didn't want to bring that up, but Jesus, Xander, yes, it's because it's better looking than the actual me. I mean, wow. I don't know why you would do that in front of all the people. Because that's a high roll, baby. <sighs> You're incredibly unkind. Yes, I am. I'll go home. Um, the last thing I wanted to do, besides call you a dick in front of all our listeners, is thank... <laughs> Is thank uh, Godzilla Eyes for sitting in my apartment and watching Rousedower as he runs around trashing everything to keep him quiet during the podcast. There was like no cat interruption during this episode, which I think is a landmark for Shallow Cast, and it's all thanks to my fake cousin, Godzilla Eyes, who is great. Now go home. So, no, you, did you want to, were you trying to do that at the same time as me again? No, I'm trying work. to stand out, be an individual. Okay, because you're not. You, this is not an individual show. This is Nathan Soros and Xander Grimm. Fine. This isn't Xander Grimm featuring Nathan Soros. This is this is us as a team. This is not our individual shit. Are Although, you done? I guess. If, I yes. I'm sorry. I'm done. Okay. Jeez. Bye. Bye. <laughs> You are all weirdos! Ugh.